As a boy, I dreamed of traveling to far off places. I first realized those dreams by riding through Africa, which only strengthened my wanderlust. For over a decade, I vagabonded around the world, and in all that distance, a quarter of a million miles on good roads and bad, my BMW motorcycle Olga was my two-wheel companion. No at my keyboard, the miles behind me, all those images of people and places packed away in my head. I asked myself, would I do that all over again? Could I? I remember taking off from Christian Sun, which is my hometown, and just traveling through Europe and he was like, what am I doing? I just sold everything I own in my life. I have two cardboard boxes at home at my mom's with belongings. That's all I own in life and the rest I'm sitting across this bike here and heading for Sahara. Well, I left Europe by boat from uh, the southern tip of Spain. From there I passed the border into Morocco. I was wondering where to camp that night. I was a little nervous, I must admit that, because I was in a strange country and a lot of things had happened that day. And then this guy on a little scooter come along and he said, hey, come on, you can stay in my village. And I stayed there and I had a great time. I remember I didn't sleep much that night because cockroaches, fleas, they were crawling all over me. But in all that pain, if you will, I think I realized, and with a smile, that I was on a journey now. From the beginning, I lived out of my small tent, cooking food on a gasoline stove. In this way, I had tremendous freedom wherever I went, and I could choose between company and isolation as I wished. At first I found the silence of the desert uncomfortable. Even my heartbeat was too loud. I was running away from uh, a life that I didn't want to run in Norway. Being a normal guy, doing all this, having a profession, I was not sure what I wanted to do. I want to have something more challenging. I think Africa got me to ask this. Why in heck am I doing this? What is the purpose? And then I start to see by writing articles, I could actually share these things with people. I could write about more the human side of uh, the people I met on the road. I traveled for almost three years in South America and I thought about it would take a year or so. But time at that moment, it didn't matter much for me. Yeah, I didn't have a time schedule. I just, what mattered more was to keep away from the rainy season or the winter in the south. So I did like the birds, I migrated north. The Pan American Highway have a missing link of 80 miles and I chose to take the bike to it. I had 40 yards of rope and pulleys and to get through I had to pull them up the hills and down deep steep embankments of the rivers. In the rivers you had snakes, you had to watch out for ticks. They were probably the worst. And Joachim, the German guy, that backpacker that helped me through this hell, uh, we were sitting there at night taking p uh, ticks off of each other. And he had 156, I believe. That was the record that he got off his body one night. I fell over with my motorcycle. I broke my, my wrist or later. I broke my rib. It took us 20 days to go those 80 miles. On this ride, I became the first person to motorcycle the length of the Pan American Highway without using an airplane or ferry between Colombia and Panama. I wanted to reach up to Alaska before winter set in. So I headed north and I was freezing cold. And I said, I never used to be this cold. And then I thought about hey, wait a minute, I just came from three years in the tropics. This body is used to 80, 90 degrees, and now it was like below zero. 
So I turned around and went back to Seattle where I knew I could find a warm nest to stay over winter. I knew nothing about motorcycling when I met him, nothing. There, there's things about it that I like, you know, about, about it being a, an easy way to get around. And there's some things about it that I don't like. One of them is, is just really clearly that motorcycling can be very dangerous. When I met Karen, the first thing when we had a confrontation, I won my bike and over the hill because there would be a thousand other girls over that hill and so on and so on. I was very uncertain about this female uh, way of seeing life and confrontation was very scary. I would rather do 10 jungles, Amazonas and 20 Sahara Desert than having a big argument with Karen. <laughs> For me, it had been hard enough just being in Seattle for a whole winter. Years had gone by since I had been that long in one place. At the same time, I was trying to get to know Karen really well, and that was probably the hardest part. Karen and me went on our first trip from Seattle across the country to uh, Florida. Next big journey was when we went to uh, Japan. After Karen and me had been riding for three months in Japan, I went further to South Korea. Then I worked on a ship down to Australia. So I went to Singapore, Malaysia, to Sri Lanka, and up, ended up in India. I went up to Nepal, to Pakistan, went through Iran. Whenever it was that Helge's odyssey around the world was going to be finished, I knew there was going to be withdrawal. For me, it was comfortable to cross deserts, to cross jungles. No, I had to face the, the challenge of settling down, of staying in one place. After ending up in Norway, 10 years after I started, I was approached by a publisher and produced 10 years on two wheels. Would I do that all over again? Could I? The answer come clearly. No way. It would just take too much energy. More than I can muster. But I'm still out there, riding the world's back roads and byways. Just not all in one go. I'm too old to do it for 10 years again. I see myself doing these uh, three, four, five months trips, but that's kind of a limit. If Karen go with me, that would be different. I know Karen don't like motorcycle as much and after a long day we've been both on the bike and she will whisper, Land Rover, Land Rover. <laughs> I think that's her dream, to travel through Africa in a Land Rover. <laughs>